Hey guys, so last time we talked about probability basics, some terms and notation. Now let's go ahead and apply those things into some problems. So first things first, union and disjoint. So we have to know basically the union, which is just one event or another, right? One important thing to talk about first is whether they're disjoint or not. Remember disjoint, we're talking about mutually exclusive, things like that. They can happen at the same time or they can't happen at the same time. So when you're looking for union, there's this addition rule that comes into play. And union, remember, is A or B of these two events. So the notation is A with a little U of B equals P of A plus P of B minus P of A. And what was the upside down U, remember? So this upside down U is and, and let's go ahead and note this one too. This is or, right? So cool, it's the probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Sounds confusing, right? We'll go ahead and do some practice problems to kind of reinforce that formula. But remember, probability of A and B is intersection, probability of events A and B. So now let's look at the differences between jointed and disjointed problems. So jointed, you have some intersection, right? So there's a little intersection right there. Disjointed, you don't. So if two events are disjoint, then probability of A and B, right? A little upside down U. Probability of A and B equals zero. So probability of A or B is probability of A plus probability of B. What am I saying, right? So let's go ahead and look at these real quick. We have probability of A, right, on the left-hand side, right here, and then probability of B on the right. Now, probability of A and B is this guy here. So if we said probability of A plus probability of B, and it's not disjoint, the problem is that we count that little middle section twice, right? Because if we say all of A, plus all of B, we're counting that little middle section two times. So that's why we go ahead and subtract the probability of A and B, so that we get rid of one of them and we don't count it twice. Does that make sense? So here, probability of A and B is for disjoint, we don't include the minus probability of A and B because it's just zero, right? Because probability of A and B would be any intersection. Here, probability of A and B is zero, right? So the formula just basically drops the final term because there is no probability of A and B. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and apply some of this information. So what's the probability that a person is guilty or Hispanic? So here I have some criminal trials, whether they're guilty or innocent, and also different ethnicities. So guilty or Hispanic. Basically, we'll say guilty is event A, Hispanic is event B, and we're looking for probability of A or B. So now, probability of A or B is probability of A plus probability of B minus the probability of A and B. And the reason why I say there's an A and B because these events aren't disjoint, right? Someone can be found guilty and they can also be Hispanic. Right? So they can happen simultaneously. So there is actually this final term, um, probability of A and B. Now, what's probability of A? Probability of A is probability of someone being guilty, right? Because we kind of went ahead and defined that right here. Let me go ahead and highlight that for you guys. So we divide event A as guilty, event B is Hispanic. So probability of A is the probability that someone is guilty. How can we do that? How can we get that? Well, some ideas flowing. Well, probability of A is essentially how many people are guilty divided by the total number, right? So, what we would say is we're looking for guilty. So, guilty is yes, there's 119 that are white, 24 that are Hispanic, but a total we have 100 people that are guilty. Out of how many? This is the total total. Right, So there's a total of 300 people in this situation. And the way you can see that is because in this table we have 100 people who were guilty, 200 that were innocent, total of 300. You wouldn't recount the bottom because the bottom column, or the bottom row right here basically separates that 300 but in a different way. Does that make sense? Separates them by ethnicities versus the 100 and 200 which is just guilty versus innocent. So 
enough talking. Let's do some math. Probability of A. So guilty is we have 100 people who are guilty. 100 people guilty over 300 total, right? And that's how we're basically going to do the rest of them. There's 100 guilty people divided by 300 total. Plus probability of B. So B, we're looking at Hispanic, right? So Hispanic, we wouldn't get the 24 who were guilty. We wouldn't get just the ones who were innocent. We would look at the total, right? So what's the total that's Hispanic? It's 178 were Hispanic out of 300, right? So I'm not going to write Hispanic in 300 just to save some space. But I'm going to leave it there for the first one so you guys have an idea of how we would get those probabilities given a table. And then minus probability of A and B. So what's the probability of someone being Hispanic and guilty? So the probability of someone being Hispanic and guilty is actually the intersection of both of them. And you would find that by just looking at where do both of them happen. So they both happen right here, right? We have 24 who were Hispanic and guilty. So minus 24 over 300. Does that make sense? And that's it. So once we figure this out, we should end up getting 0.8467. Or basically there's around an 85% chance that someone's gonna be guilty or Hispanic. It's pretty high. <laughs> cool. So that's it for the first example. Let's move on to the next one. Now next one, what's the probability you roll at least an eight? So here we're talking about dice rolls, right? So two dice, you toss them out. Here I gave you a probability distribution. So we didn't have to find that. I actually told you what's the probability of rolling all of these. And so we have one over 36, 18, 12, one over nine, five over 36, et cetera, et cetera. And so what's the probability they roll at least an eight? So what does rolling at least an eight actually mean? So that's the probability that we roll at least eight, so that means we want eight and more, right? So I'm gonna say greater than or equal to eight. So we want our roll to be greater than or equal to eight. So we should go ahead and add them, right? Because we're not actually talking about separate events. We're saying in general, just overall, it's either eight, eight or more, right? So this is probability of eight, or, I'm sorry, or 9, or 10, etc., up to 12, right? So, this is another union problem because we're not saying we want to roll an 8 on one and then a 9 on another. We want to just roll in general a total of 8, or 9, or 10, or up to 12, and we don't really care. So, we're going to go ahead and add these things up. And it's probability of A or B or C, or D, etc. And these are these different letters are corresponding to rolling an 8, rolling a 9, rolling a 10, rolling 11, rolling a 12. But now a question for you guys. Would this be a disjoint event or would it be um, jointed? It's actually going to be disjoint. The reason for that is because you can't roll, you can't toss two die out, get a three, and also at the same time, roll two dice and get a four, right? Because we're still talking about the same two dice. So you can't roll a sum of a three and then get a four too, right? The sum is either going to be three or it's going to be four. Does that make sense? So these are actually disjoint. So dice rolls are disjoint. So that means we don't have to actually put that final little term. So remember up here, we put probability of A and B. We don't have to worry about this in this case. We just literally add up all the probabilities and that's our answer. So it's probability of A plus probability of B plus, keep going, all the way to probability of E. So let's go ahead and just plug in the numbers. So the probability of rolling at least an eight is the probability of rolling an 8, which is 5 over 36, plus one, run, uh, rolling a 9, which is 1 over 9, rolling a 10, rolling 11, and rolling a 12, right? So 
that's basically all our possibilities. And once we add everything up, we should end up getting a 0.4167. Cool. So that's about it for the addition rule and talking about the joint and disjointed. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to our next rule, um, the multiplication rule, and then eventually just some massive problems to kind of tie everything together for us to practice with. So until next time, take care.